Welcome to the Next Level Faith Podcast. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland, best-selling author and life coach for ambitious women of faith. Join me each week to learn more about the strategies, tools, and mindset needed to arise from the overwhelm and create a joyful life you love. To learn how you can work with me further, grab your copy of my best-selling book, Arise and Shine, or check out how you can get your ticket to my next Awake conference or retreat, head over to juliannekirkland.com. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode because the best version of you begins on your next level of faith. Hey, hey, my friends, welcome back. I'm your host, Julianne Kirkland with the Next Level Faith Podcast. I am so happy you keep joining me here week after week. Today, I am talking all about what it means to be a kingdom entrepreneur, and it means so much more than being a Christian in business. In 2020, 2 million women, 2 million women were forced or had to leave the workplace because of everything that happened with COVID. That's 2 million women. And there's still a call on those women's individual life, right? Like, yes, they're a mom and they're thrown into this, like, okay, now I have to be a mom and a teacher and in this more expansive role that they now have, but they still have that call in their life to make an impact, to make an impact for the kingdom, to use their skills and talents to impact others' lives, to make a difference, to contribute to their family in an income way. And so they are greatly pursuing how to become an entrepreneur. And so I want to talk about what it means to be a kingdom entrepreneur, because there's tons of experts, there's tons of gurus that can help an entrepreneur succeed, no problem. But a kingdom entrepreneur is different. Okay, so we're going to talk about that. And this can be a very sensitive topic. Many can tend to get in their feels about it when you start to talk about what it actually means to be kingdom driven. Okay, but just know that what I'm saying is 100% led by the spirit and is backed with scripture. Okay, so if If you notice you're starting to get in your feels about something, like if something I say triggers you, that needs to be between you and the Holy Spirit, right? Not so much between me and you, okay? Let's start at the beginning, shall we? Because I always feel it is the best place to start when context is important to the point, okay? There are two functioning kingdoms that have existed since the beginning of time. And that would be the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of the world. The kingdom of heaven is ruled by God and is also referred to as the kingdom of light. The kingdom of heaven is also invisible and it exists in the spiritual realm. The kingdom of the world was given to men to rule. However, all that got botched up in the garden when Satan came in, right? The kingdom of the world is ruled by Satan and is also referred to as the kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of the world exists in the visible or the physical realm, okay? Fun fact, the word for darkness in Hebrew means ignorance. Isn't that amazing? That's why in any area of our life that we continue to remain ignorant in, Satan can use that to gain a foothold. And if it continues to go on, remaining unchecked, remaining unsanctified, then that foothold becomes a stronghold. And that's when we're in bondage. And that is not the life that God has meant for us. Okay. Also, fun fact, the Hebrew word for light means knowledge. It's just, it's so cool to see throughout all all the world, right? that there is this good, evil, dark, light. For every action, there is an an equal reaction, right? 
God is so amazing and so beautiful and so much stuff seems sporadic and, and like, what, how did this happen? But he is a God of order. Like he, he, this is his design and it's a beautiful thing. So if there is a place where you're ignorant in, you can seek the light, you can seek the knowledge that's how strongholds are broken. They're broken with the truth of who we are in Christ. Jesus died so that we do not remain in bondage. But we have to, to proceed that way. We have to go towards the light. We have to go towards the truth. We have to go towards the knowledge. Because when we remain ignorant, that's where Satan gets his foothold. Okay. Sorry. I digress. <laughs> it's just, it's also fascinating to me. Okay. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verses three, it's one of my most favorite uh, verses in the Bible. I just, I think it's fascinating. Okay. It says by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed and created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Okay. This is saying the world's plural. The Greek word for world is cosmos. And yes, it's referencing the universe, but it also gives us a clear image if we keep reading. It said the worlds were framed by what is seen, aka the visible, the physical, what is seen. Okay. And the invisible, the, what was not seen or what was not visible. Okay. That's the invisible, the spiritual world, the spiritual realm. Both are existing at the same time, both the physical, visible, and the spiritual invisible. And we know that God is spirit. It's very real. It's happening. Oh, I have to stay surface level here because I can go on and on on a deep dive on this. In fact, I, I told you I love it so much that I did a separate audio training on how to manifest abundance through faith, all based on this scripture. <laughs> and if you want access to that, you can get it at www.juliankirkland.com. If you want to really go in deep on Hebrews chapter 11 and how to manifest abundance through your faith. Okay. But for the sake of this podcast, let's keep it in understanding that there are two kingdoms, the kingdom of heaven, which is also known as the kingdom of light, the kingdom of the invisible, the kingdom of the spiritual. Okay. Those are all the kingdom of heaven and they're ruled by God. And then we have the kingdom of the world which is also known as the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of the visible or the kingdom of the physical. Okay. Those are all the kingdom of the world, which is ruled by Satan. And once you understand there are two kingdoms with two rulers, you get to decide which kingdom you will become a citizen of. You see, just as I'm a citizen of the United States, and that comes with certain rights, certain laws, certain privileges. And when I go against one of those, there are consequences for it. Okay. Same thing in the kingdom of heaven. Now I have yet to meet someone who chooses the kingdom of darkness. Are they out there? I'm sure they are, but I have yet to meet someone. Okay. There are plenty of people who choose the kingdom of darkness, but simply by default because they're neglecting to choose the kingdom of light, which means, you know, by default, you're choosing the kingdom of darkness, which means as horrible as it sounds, Satan is your ruler. Okay. I told you this topic gets people all in their feels. <laughs> it's a big gut check because you see, most people want to claim the kingdom of heaven but are still living and working as if they are citizens of the kingdom of darkness. 
In John 17, 14 through 16, we're told multiple times that even though we are in the world, we are not of the world. We are set apart. And how do we know when we are acting of this world instead of of God? That's where the sanctification process comes in, right? It's taking us from glory to glory and it's surrendering all those fleshly desires, that carnality that we have, allowing ourselves to be sanctified, to be more like Christ. In verse 17, it says, sanctify them in truth. Set them apart for your purposes. Make them holy. Your word is truth. And then Jesus goes on to say that in verse 20, but also for all those who will ever believe and trust in me through their message, that they may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be one in us so that the whole world may believe without any doubt that you sent me. We choose to live as citizens of the kingdom of heaven while still living here in the world. And we do that by living by the truth, by the word of God. Matthew 6, 10 tells us your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are commissioned to pray this way because that is how God wants us to live. He's not saying, okay, while you're in the world, you just do the worldly things and I'll check back in when you get to heaven. No, he's saying, bring it down. Bring the kingdom down. The goal of a kingdom entrepreneur is to first check and sanctify all that you do in accordance with the kingdom principles. You are functioning of the kingdom of heaven in the kingdom of the world. You no longer work and play of the world, yet go to church and live of God. Does that make sense? Like as a kingdom entrepreneur, God is your CEO, your COO, your janitor, and everything in between. He's involved in it all. I noticed when I first began to allow the Holy Spirit to lead me, which side note right here, being led by the Holy Spirit is not the same as being inspired by the Holy Spirit. Being led by the Holy Spirit requires action on your part. That's a writer downer right there. Okay. Being led is not the same as being inspired because being led by the Holy Spirit requires action on your part. Okay. When I first started being led and aligning my life with God's will, I noticed depending on the season, the maturity or the mood I was in, I would go forth in one of three ways. Okay. Way number one, I would go before God. I'm extremely ambitious. I am like, Balls to the wall, get it done, go, 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 okay? And this is really a common theme amongst ambitious women, especially those who are entrepreneurs, because we are taught by all the experts to jump and build your wings on the way down, right? To just start, to just start messy, do it afraid, take that imperfect action. And although all that has truth to it, And it is all great business advice. Okay. You have to start. You can't, you can't think, oh, I need to make this perfect. I need to make this perfect. You have to start. And sometimes you have to do it afraid. And sometimes you have to do it messy. Okay. But you don't do it before God. Okay. Going before God is like the whole philosophy that a lot of teenagers use, (laughs) which it's easier to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission, right? And the problem with that philosophy is that God doesn't want to be your afterthought. He doesn't want to be your plan B. And I was and still am guilty of living this way on 
many occasions. My ambition and tenacity keeps me moving forward hard and fast. And although it has served me in my business many times, it has cost me in in multiplying the kingdom. It really has because I go before God and then I'm like, oh crap, um, God, can you help me? I need, I've messed this up, <laughs> right? I, I got so, I got inspired and then I, I jumped instead of really connecting with the Holy Spirit and be like, okay, Holy Spirit, what is step one? What do you want me to proceed? How do you want me to proceed in this? That's the difference, right? There are so many times where I am walking fully aligned with God. And it's when I'm living as the best version of myself. And then it's like squirrel, right? There's that shiny object syndrome that happens. I get distracted from what God and I are doing. And I want to go do this thing or this thing, or I think, oh, this will be better. Right? Like, did you just hear what I said? And it's so true. I'm on like God's path, working with him, flowing, feels real good. And then I'm like, oh, wait, look over here. Lord, let's try this. This will be better. And he's like, oh, I can just see him like shaking his head. No, no, no. Oh, daughter. (laughs) Oh, my daughter. I keep him very busy. I really do. Okay. But I just, I think it's such an amazing opportunity. And so I get distracted and I'm want to go pursue that. But what I've come to learn is that just because it's an amazing opportunity doesn't mean it's from God. That was a hard one for me because I'm like, ooh, opportunity. Sweet. This must be from the Lord. I wouldn't ask him. I wouldn't pray about it. I'd just be like, yep, it's an opportunity. Dunzers. And that <laughs> that's not always the case. You know, sometimes God is saying, no, You know, be like Nehemiah up on that wall, refusing to come down until we finish what we've started. He's like, quit asking for more things when you haven't accomplished what I've given you to do right here, right now. But we do because it starts to get hard. (laughs) And then we're like, oh, but let's try it this way. And he's like, no, daughter, stop it. Focus. Okay. Way two is to go with God. And this is when you're functioning in your sweet spot. This is when you're living out Romans 12, 2, which says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Going with God does not mean you never seize an opportunity that comes before you. It means you check in with the Holy Spirit first before you take off. Sometimes you'll feel complete peace and assurance, and that's great. Seize it. Then you will have those times where you hear or you feel nothing. And when that happens, you ask again. And if there's still st- still silence, Take a step in that direction and then check back in with the Holy Spirit and then take another step and then check back in with the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes when God seems silent, he's taking you on a faith walk or he's like, all right, next step. All right, come. I'm still here. Next step. Come. I'm still here. Right. He, he wants to see you moving towards that faithful walk, right? He's not telling you to be still. If you check in and your spirit gets all kinds of stirred up and like, oh, you might want to have a real honest conversation with God. He knows what is best for you. That is his desire is the best for you. You are his precious child. He wants the absolute best for you. And even if you derail his favor and blessings by going off the path, by getting distracted, by getting squirreled, right? He's always going to be working to bring that distraction for your good. That's what he does. He is a good, good father, right? And so even though 
in our flesh, we can get distracted. It doesn't mean that like we have to start all the way over again. God's like, okay, we're detouring. All right, let's do this. And then begins this process of more sanctification and, and more really working through that process of that distraction and then pulling you back towards the path that you were originally on to keep you moving forward. Okay. And there's been so many times where that's happened to me. I will get distracted and then God's like, Oh, okay. So instead of going from point A to point B in a year, I go from point A to point B in two years <laughs> because we have to spend this like big roundabout way of really sanctifying me. He's like, okay, you chose to get distracted. You chose to go off path. All right. I got to work out some stuff within you then. Like you still have some becoming to do. You still have um, this journey. There's still things I need to teach you. There's still things I need to show you. Okay. So we're going to work through all that. And I don't know about you, but the sanctification process, it kind of hurts, right? It's that shedding of, of your carnality, that shedding of your flesh, that shedding of you and becoming more like Christ. And so when we get off track, more of that has to happen, okay? So way three is when you're going after God, not like after I'm like gung ho, I'm going after you, God, going after him, like later than him. Okay. This would typically happen to me after I went through a serious sanctification, like after I jumped ahead or I got distracted and God was like, Oh, we got to work through this. Right. And so I would then become almost fearful to move forward again. And I would wait and then I would question and then I would wait and then I would question and then I would ask for a sign and God would give me a sign. I'd be like, no, that's not it. That's not, the, that's not the sign. Are you sure, Lord? I need you to give me another sign. Can you open up some opportunities for me? Can you introduce me to some people that I need to work with to, to take me where I need to go? And he'd be like, yes, daughter. And he would present an opportunity or introduce me to somebody. And I'd be like, oh, okay, no, I'm just going to wait on that. I need to pray about it. And he's like, daughter, you did pray about it. <laughs> this is the answer to your prayer. <laughs> but it was really saying like, I need to pray about it. It was more about being fearful and in doubt and unbelief than actually praying about it and getting with the Holy Spirit and being like, yes, thank you, Lord. Is this from you? I will take a step forward. I will walk in faith. I will be with you. God would move and then I would just kind of hang back and, and wait and then like maybe take a step forward once I like really knew it was safe, <laughs> you know, and out of all these three ways, going with God is the absolute best, you know, when you go after God or behind God, your fear, your doubt, your unbelief can keep you stuck. I was taking the very literal approach to Psalm 4610, where it says, be still and know. I would be still. I would be statue still. But the Hebrew meaning for the word still is let go. God wasn't calling me to be frozen, to be still, to be a statue. He was calling me to let go of that emotional, mental turmoil I was putting myself in. All that unrest that we go through when we feel like we have to control everything. We have to control the outcome. We have to control what we're going through. We have to control our conditions and circumstances. God saying, let go, let go and know that I am God. He's like, daughter, I want the best for you. Trust me, come do this with me. Okay. Faith is an action word. It requires movement. So out of the three ways to be led, 
with God is the way to go. And when you are in full alignment with his will and you get to experience God's math, which is all about multiplication, right? We do so much addition, but God's math is multiplication. And as a kingdom entrepreneur, that is the kind of increase that we are living for. We declare multiplication in our life, in our influence, in our finances, in our health. Everything we do is for the multiplication of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. And my friend, don't fret if you are new to this or are currently functioning before or after God. Functioning with God, that takes practice. It requires you to attune your ear to the Holy Spirit in everything, everything, not just some of the things, in everything. And you can practice that. It's, you know, some people might get it like that. I sure didn't. There Again, there's still seasons where I, I jump before God. There's still seasons where I start traveling after him, but I'm getting better and better at being with him, really walking with him and, and listening to what he's telling me and getting involved in the word and allowing the Holy spirit to work through me. And again, it requires practice and you can practice on such a a, a granular level, right? You can be like, Lord, which of these two meal options should I have for lunch today? And that may seem so silly, but God wants to be a part of it all. He wants it all. And in your obedience, that's where you will receive breakthrough. And because of your obedience, others that you have influence over will get to receive their breakthrough. Your breakthrough, another person's breakthrough is all tied to your obedience amazing. Okay, my friends, that's all I have for you today. I want to honor you for continuing to support and share this podcast. Your referrals are received as as the greatest compliment. So I want to thank you. And as always, please message me over on Instagram at the Julian Kirkland and share with me how God spoke to you through this episode. And if you're looking to grow as a kingdom entrepreneur, I have a few spots remaining for my one-on-one coaching and you can book your free discovery call at www.juliankirkland.com. And remember the best version of you begins on your next level of faith. Bye for now.